We have all been told that drugs are dangerous, but maybe none are more notorious than opioids and specifically heroin. It's considered a very addictive and dangerous drug, of which it is said that using it once can lead to addiction. In today's video we will cover its origin, we will discuss its effect on your health as well as on your body and we will cover how an addiction and an overdose could look like. This and many many more we will cover in this video, so make sure to watch it completely so you don't miss any important information. And the purpose of this video is to educate you so you can make healthier decisions. Let's therefore get started. So let's start with its origin. And you might be surprised to learn that opioids are much much older than you might think. It starts all the way back 3400 before Christ in old Mesopotamia. There, opium was extracted from the poppy plant and consumed for its high. Now, opium itself contains codeine and morphine, which gives opium its opioid effects. Of course, the people using it back in Mesopotamia didn't know this and they just used it for its high. But with the advancements of medicine and science, these substances were first analyzed back in the 19th century. This discovery sparked a lot of excitement for research and experimentation with opioids, as scientists all over the world were searching for an alternative to morphine, which was less potent and less addictive. Instead of this product, the search led to the creation of diamorphine in 1874 by a British chemist named C. Wright. This diamorphine wasn't less potent, but one and a half to two times more potent than real regular morphine, and therefore this young chemist discarded his research. Up until the 23-year-old chemist Felix Hoffman, working at biopharmaceutical company, resynthesized it many years later, in 1897. What amazes me is that I didn't know this chemical genius named Hoffman, as he synthesized it on the 21st of August. He synthesized diamorphine, and just 11 days later, he synthesized aspirin. So, Hoffman is actually the chemist that brought Bayer its aspirin and Bayer brought it to the world. So, this young chemist kind of changed the world for the better, but also for the worse, which might explain why he's not so well known. Now, after his discovery, Bayer branded diamorphine as heroin, which stands for the German word heroisch, which means heroic or strong. And they started to mass produce it and sold it as an over-the-counter drug to suppress coughing and as a substitute for morphine, supposedly without the addictive side effects. Here you need to know that morphine back in the time was a very popular recreational drug and Bayer wanted to find a non-addictive version of it, so they could make a lot of money. Fortunately for Bayer and of course the users of heroin, they were soon to find out that heroin would have one of the highest rates of addiction ever seen in a commercialized drug. The rate of addiction among its users spiraled so quickly that by 1914 the US regulated its usage and the complete usage of opioids. From then, heroin and other opioids could only be bought when they were prescribed and sold for medical purposes. But this merely made a dent in the problem. Therefore, heroin was fully banned in 1925. Now, the second thing which amazed me when looking into the history of heroin was that heroin led to the creation of the first design of drug. In the same year heroin was banned, so 1925, several chemists started to create chemical compounds with a similar structure and effect as heroin, in fact, creating design of drugs. Back then, these were produced in massive quantities to fill the worldwide demand for heroin, which continued all the way up to 1930, when all heroin and heroin-like drugs were banned if they did not have any therapeutic edge above the already existing forms of drugs, so heroin itself. In the years which followed, you might not be surprised to learn that the number of people using heroin did not really decline. This can in part be explained through its very addictive nature, and for the second reason, it was mentioned a lot in popular culture back then. Some well-known examples are Billie Holiday, Charlie Parker, Ray Charles, Kurt Cobain, and John Lennon. Which brings us to today, where heroin is mostly used legally as a recreational drug. Although in some European countries, it is prescribed for very specific medical purposes. 
For example, may be prescribed for the treatment of acute pain during severe physical trauma, a heart attack, biosurgical pain, and chronic pain in the end stage of a terminal illness. And you might wonder now how many people are still actually using heroin. Well, this number differs depending on the region you look in or the country you're searching in. But according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, about 1.1 million people aged 12 and older have used heroin these last 12 months in the United States alone. Worldwide, we're talking more than 9,200,000 people. And the highest number of users are found in Asia, specifically in Iran and Pakistan. Now, before we will cover the effects heroin can have on your body or long-term effects it could cause, I want to ask you to click the like and subscribe button. That is, if you're learning a lot. You see, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make. If you do enjoy them, please share some love. This will help out the channel tremendously. It's free and you can always change your mind. Let's continue. Heroin is also called diamorphin, dope, smack, age, snow, china white and brown. It's usually a white or brownish powder and when you buy it illegally it can often be cut with different substances. Usually it's done with sugar, starch, a powder of milk and it has a bitter taste. Here one of the great dangers of using heroin comes into play. Because it's often cut and you do not know with what, it's very hard to dose it accordingly and this significantly can increase your risk of an overdose. Now, heroin itself can be used by injecting it, smoking it, or snorting it, and the onset of the effects is therefore rapid and it lasts for a few hours. When you take it, it enters your bloodstream and then quickly passes the blood brain barrier. From there, heroin can bind to specific receptors in the reward center of your brain. There, it can trigger the mu opioid receptors. This stimulates the release of a neurotransmitter called dopamine which activates several pathways in the brain. In addition, heroin will also affect the neurochemical activity in your brainstem, which normally regulates automated body processes like your breathing rate, heart rate, and so forth. Furthermore, it alters the activity of your limbic system, which normally controls your emotion, and it can block pain messages transmitted through the spinal cord from the body. Together, this leads to several short-term effects using heroin can cause, of which some are physical, like pain relief, nausea, vomiting, itching, warm flushing of the skin, a dry mouth, heavy feelings in your arms or legs, constricted pupils, drowsiness, decreased heart rate, a decreased breathing rate, and a lowered blood pressure. It can also cause some psychological effects, like a rush with an intense feeling of pleasure or euphoria, confusion, feelings of calmness, relaxation, emotional numbing, and craving for more heroin use. As you can imagine, repeated use of heroin can have a devastating impact on your health, as it could lead to changes in the physical structure and the receptors in your brain, potentially creating long-term imbalances in neural and hormonal systems, as this is not easily reversed. Long-term effects, therefore, might include addiction and dependence, chronic constipation, insomnia and sleep disorders, liver and kidney diseases, an increased risk for infections such as HIV or hepatitis, for example due to shared needles, damage to the heart, lungs or other organs, mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, personality disorders, a reduced libido and sexual dysfunction, and cognitive impairment and memory loss. Which brings us to another huge risk the risk of overdose, as an overdose is always a medical emergency which immediately requires medical attention. So therefore, it's also important you're able to recognize its symptoms so you can act immediately and potentially save a life. Therefore, look out for one or multiple of the following symptoms. Difficulties breathing or shallow breathing, blue or grayish lips or nails, a cold clammy skin, pinpoint pupils, severe confusion or disorientation, unresponsiveness or coma, chest pain or heart palpitations, and or a seizure or convulsions. Now, as you might expect, the best way to prevent any of these problems is to not use heroin at all. And luckily, there are some treatments and some tips which might help you if you are dealing with an addiction or a struggle when using opioids or specifically heroin. There are several treatment options available. 
for example, MAT, Medication Assisted Treatment. This involves the usage of medications such as methadone to help manage withdrawal symptoms and cravings. There is behavioral therapy, which involves working with a counsel or therapist to address psychological and behavioral aspects of addiction. Residential treatment, which involves staying in a facility where individuals receive 24 hours of medical and behavioral support, which allows you to quit using heroin. There are many more treatment options and they can get very specific. Therefore, I wanna urge you to discuss this with your personal doctor. He or she can help you to make a specific treatment plan which works for you. So please take up the phone, call your doctor and discuss it. Now, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the playlist in the description with more awesome videos. And remember again, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make. If you do enjoy them, please leave a like, subscribe. This will help out the channel tremendously. And I made a second channel specifically where we will discover uh, certain medications and how to win how I'm going to use them. If you want to see that, also check out the description. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next week with a new video. Check out the Insta, TikTok, Facebook. Bye-bye.